Nationalism. The patriotic feeling principles or efforts of a country or colony. One prime example of nationalism is the French Revolution. Now, before we begin, take note of a counter in the top left-hand corner. This is the failure counter. With every good revolution comes some drawbacks. These will be counted up there. Now let's begin with King Louis the Sixteenth. Now France began strong with making the leader of a country a fat, unknowledgeable fool of a man. So, that's fail number one. Now turning to France itself, it was in a bad place. Why? Because money was a huge issue in the country, primarily because of one reason, debt. Now an important role in living in France was eating, primarily bread. Yeah, bread. Its price rose, which made people angry, because in this time, the frame of France was bread was greater than life. Not to mention that during this whole economic depression, there was Queen Mary Antoinette, who was the epitome of economic worth with her custom-made dresses and her four-foot-tall hair, paired with a fat man who eats too much of what France wants. Thus, we have fails number two and three. There was three separate estates in France, the clergy, nobility, and literally everybody else in France, which was 98% of the population of France. The way voting worked back in France was the simple fact that these three estates voted, not the population. Thus, what the clergy and nobility wanted, they got. So fail number four for terrible voting schemes. So here is where the revolution starts. The people of France wanted change. The clergy and nobility groups did not like that whatsoever. So the peasants said, okay, bye, and they can't even be in the same room as the other two estates. Well, what was the peasants' response to this? They decided to meet in a different location. Where? A tennis court. Yeah, a tennis court, where the peasants become the National Assembly. So while in the tennis court, the tennis court oath is created by the mastermind of it all, Maximilien Robespierre, which basically, this means that the peasants aren't going to stop it until they create a French constitution. Now, in response to this, King Louis XVI sent guards all throughout France, creating the idea that he wants to destroy the National Assembly. Thus, the Assembly decides they need weapons, they need guns, so they store in the Bastille, steal thousands of guns for thousands of people, thus making the only logical decision that they could have made. Killing. Now, while in the life of the Queen, people found out that she was holding wheat away from everyone, and again, bread was greater than life. So this occurrence caused quite a stir. As a result to this rumor, a bunch of armed women stormed the Versailles with the intention of taking all the bread and wheat and making the king and queen leave Versailles to be imprisoned in Paris. This was successful and the king and queen were sent off to Paris. While plotting their escape, the king and queen decided to dress up as servants to escape away from Paris. This, of course, failed, and they were taken by revolutionaries and placed back into home arrest in Paris. We could throw about three more fails just for that. So, we're up to fail number seven. Let's now introduce the Jacobins, or Jacobins, or Jacobins, I don't know how you say it, say it however you want. The revolutionary group, with the only logic of killing the king and queen, they play a very important role in this, so we'll get back to them in a bit. Finally, in 1791, the National Assembly created a constitution, but this was not the end of the revolution under any circumstances. It was still going strong. Now here comes the revolutionary group, the Jacobins. They decided to make France a republic in 1792, basically making the constitution they worked so hard to f affirm invalid. Thus, fail number eight. In France, a revolutionary tool was manufactured, the guillotine, which became very valuable of a tool and should have probably been on their flag at the point. Finally, in 1793, the Jacobins got their wish and King Louis XVI was killed by the guillotine. So let's do a little recap. Remember that man Robespierre? He basically led the way to a new constitution, the destruction of said constitution due to the republic, and the death of a king. This can make a man feel pretty accomplished. Robespierre led the new fantastic group known as the Committee of Public Safety, which turned out to be the exact opposite of public safety where they started the Reign of Terror. The Reign of Terror was a period of time where the guillotine shined. Thousands of people were killed by it for reasons which make very little sense. But remember, it's for their public safety, right? Also, the Queen was killed in this period because of the extreme threat she absolutely didn't pose. Robespierre also ran into a bit of trouble during all of this, when he himself was involved in a bit of guillotining. He was sentenced to be killed, but did not want to meet his demise. So Maximilien Robespierre made the only logical decision you could have. He shot himself in the face, but he made one key failure. 
he missed and shot his jaw, not, not killing him, but making him feel unimaginable pain. He was then guillotined and killed, which got rid of what seemed to be only a bit of a leader of France had. There are various theories as to when the revolution actually ended. Whether it be with the death of Robespierre at a later time, it's up for you to decide when you think it ended.